whether it be a $1 dinghy or a $200 ship, Lego pirates are pretty cool, but some of it's kind of boring, like this rowboat, which is only one piece. So in this video, I'm gonna upgrade this and all these other sets to have the ultimate pirate layout, or the best I can do with a handful of parts and some leftover wrapping paper. I'm not qualified for any of this. Tiny thing is not much to look at, but with some parts like oars in a sail that all cost less than a dollar, there's a major difference, leaving me with something that looks like a pirate's vessel. Kinda. More importantly, does it survive the float test? Hey! After all the upgrades, it looks much better than something like a raft. However, when it's still smaller than a shark, I'm gonna need some more stuff. The next set being a 2D child's playground doesn't have that look I'm looking for, but it does have a solid base to build off of. And after giving it some thought, I really like the idea of keeping the bumpy plates on the side aesthetic. A lot of key designs are really easy to re-implement, like the frog figurehead, barrel crow's nest, small steering helm, or these big round tiles being used to keep the color scheme flowing around the build. But not all those designs are easy to work back in as originally intended. Or at all. The side rail seems obvious at first, but with only one, it's much less useful than I initially thought it would be. Clipping it on sideways does make for a somewhat convincing stepladder. I really wanted to come up with some clever way to make the slide work, but this just is not big enough. And medium nougat, it's not a super common color in our parts collection. Letting it live on through its color by making the mask white feels like an okay compromise. My boat is just about done, but for it to be a sail ship, I need to give it some, some sails and I have two ways to go about that. I could build it out of bricks like how I was done the Viking ship, or I could go buy some cloth sails. I've always preferred the look of fabric. There's just one little problem. They are expensive! I am not paying 25, 21 for a used napkin. Instead of that, I have an alternate solution. I'm gonna try using a paper bag we got from the Avatar sets, because I'm a hoarder and saved it, for the sales. And not cost $63, god damn! I'm in the middle of editing this and I just caught that it's actually only two sales. The third one is MIA, two sales, $63. The brick print makes for a good merchant's insignia, so with a shipload of chests and boxes, I have, I think, a pretty convincing $50 cargo ship. I'd like to expand the Kraken a bit by giving a big bottom, and the only thing left to do now is to see if they float. I probably should take the paper sails off. It's technically floating. A puny rowboat or random trading ship doesn't really fit that pirate vibe, but the biggest, normal, pirate ship LEGO has ever released does. This thing is pretty misleading. Being a two-in-one, the set can either be a crash pirate-based or a full-fledged ship, but when in ship form, there's quite a bit left over, and it is just crap. If the swashbucklers can't keep their ship afloat, then do they even deserve to keep it? Well, that is an incredibly stupid question to ask. I'm talking about a piece of plastic that has no humanity. Really, I'm just uh, poorly trying to build a narrative around turning a pirate ship into an imperial one. A faction based around the Royal British Navy who's the main opposition to pirates. But I think LEGO storytelling videos suck because they pander a little bit too hard and they're so uncomfortable that they make my spine tingle. That or I'm an unoriginal jealous hat. Either way, this is just an unnecessarily long-winded way to say that I have a very cool pirate for it and it all looks just a little lonely. While I would love to acquire a real Imperial flagship, I'll just make my own. Removing all the pirate-esque memorabilia is the first and easiest step. The next one, no. Uh so much. If you recall the butt puckering price for just one sale, I would imagine the price of six sales would send me right into cardiac arrest. So my plan is to make some templates out of cardboard that I can use to cut out some paper sales. Generic white printer paper looks a little, a little bit too clean, but some fake old looking paper from my roommate's office that I stole looks much better. One of the benefits of using some borrowed paper is that I can print on some designs before cutting it up. All I did was cut out and clean up the crossed anchor design in Photoshop, and if it looks good, I'll share it in the description for the none of you that should be trying to copy my haggard process. And if it looks bad, Turns out, making stuff on the cheap is not super preferable. Printing the blue lines took far too much ink for a printer, so I had to scale back to just the logo. And cutting paper with these cutesy ass box cutters probably was not the best idea. It's okay, it works, it looks fine. Definitely not winning any beauty awards, but looks are irrelevant as long as it passes the float test. So I think the issue with this one is the bathtub wasn't big enough for it to sink properly. With the rebranding of the pirate ship, I now have a small horde that's only gonna get bigger and I wanna build a new base for their operations. And to achieve that, I'll use, let's say, five or six of these tiny sets. The figures inside solve two problems, seamen to manage the new royal vessel, and it doesn't add to my growing homeless pirate population. Using the pieces that only appear in the set seems like an unnecessarily stupid restrict, I mean challenge. It seems like a super fun, really good time, insert keywords challenge. I get really carried away when building Lego and it takes me way more time than I'm willing to admit. Like, I would not tell you how long it took me to do this. A long time, way too much time for it to look this bad. So to prevent myself from spending days, I'm gonna set an arbitrary timer. I don't know, like maybe 30 minutes? 
There's no way that's gonna be enough. Well, a half an hour just uh, flew right by, and this is as far as I got. Who would have guessed I would have been nowhere near a finished state by the time my timer went off? Uh, me, I, I would have guessed that. I would have very much so guessed that, but you didn't ask, did you? So now we're here, and I have to see how much longer this is gonna take. Remember how I didn't wanna share how long my boat took? Yeah, I'm gonna keep this one to myself as well. Out of six islands and an obstacle course, I have three left over. That math does not add up, but I'm illiterate, so ignore that. My idea is that the shark-shaped rock once housed an outpost built by a rival country that the British eventually kicked out of the Caribbean. Being abandoned and nearly reclaimed by the sea, it's now a half-decent base for quick trade-offs between pirate crews. Supplies being abundant as stock is quickly dropped off and picked up. Most ships are far too large to get close without the fear of sinking, so rafts like these are mandatory to ferry cargo. This does help keep Imperial forces away. Pirates can only exist if they have things to pirate. In comes El Dorado Fortress. This lonely, not so little rock in the sea is quite impressive, commanding the largest price tag of any pirate set at $215. Holy shit. Not to say that this set isn't really well done. Being a remake of a classic from 1989, tons of features are remade and modernized with decades worth of new techniques and parts. Because the island isn't on one big solid chunk of plastic, the whole fort can be rearranged into whatever configuration, allowing me to display it however I see fit. And this time it comes with an actual ship and not just some rinky-dink robo. If me being a dork wasn't already painfully obvious, I really like castles and forts. I made a similar style fort to this one with my brother and dad for a school project. So to say I'm the target demographic, would be a, a, a statement, that would, an, an accurate one. But this set is not perfect, especially for $200. I mean, it can't even pass the float test. How does that float better than the ship? My biggest complaint is the minifigure count. Six Imperials to garrison a fort with any strategic significance and sail a ship is pretty dumb. Then again, you should probably take my statement with some skepticism because I think every set should have more minifigures. Adding it in as is would be fine but this wouldn't be an unnecessary project of overindulgence and mass consumerism, a big number and video title with only one $200 Ford. I mean, $200, I don't want people to go around thinking I'm poor or have good financial spending habits. I bought a second one. Okay, hear me out. With two forts, I have two ships to protect my main vessel, creating a mini fleet. With two forts, the number of combinations I can make with additional segments is multiplied even higher. I'm not sure how high, I wasn't joking when I said I'm bad at math. With two forts, I have double of everything. Cannons, cranes, cargo, secret hidden skeletons and crates, monkeys, and most importantly, the big number I can put in the video title just got bigger. A second fort, while doubling the good, also magnifies the negative. Now I have twice the base and three ships with half-size crews. That's nothing spending more money can't solve. I'm not in financial ruin. Lego chess sets, when not fully stupid, can be an amazing set to pick up when you want to have a large number of figures for a relatively affordable price. It just so happens that I have one of these chess sets and it just so happens that that chess set happens to be pirate themed. And it just so happens You're that- annoying. The kit comes with an additional nine blue coats. Only one has a hat and none have backpacks, but that's a problem for later me. I really hate me. I've always been more of a castle person, so I don't have a ton of pirate sets. So I had to steal every single hat, epaulette, and backpack from everything in our entire house and just barely, barely did not scrounge up enough to have, uh, <laughs> to have it all accurate. I had to be a little bit lenient with some of the hats here. And now I have a much better stock of soldiers and a critically high homeless pirate problem that I'm just not gonna deal with. In my final layout, there are 30 Imperial minifigures, seven ships, four islands, a trove of various creatures to attack unweary crews, and an unfixable displaced person's population for the low price of a lot of freaking money. 